Hey gang, welcome back to the Wilson Combat Channel. My name is Masad Ayub and my topic for today is fit versus feel. Most of us have had the experience in the gun shop of we pick up a pistol and wow, this feels just right, it was made for me. And when we get out and start shooting it, it doesn't perform as well as we thought. And the reason is fit and feel may be two different things. You want a pistol that fits your hand, and everybody says get something that fits your hand, and then they don't tell you what the damn measurements are. With a handgun, the key element is the, the dimension of trigger reach. On the hand, it's going to be measured from the web of the hand, aligned with the long bones of the forearm, to the chosen contact point on the trigger finger, whether it's the distal joint or the pad. Uh, when we say the pad, uh, it's generally defined as the center of the whorl of the fingerprint. Now, let's say you pick up uh, a 1911 type pistol. This is the latest evolution. I find this feels really nice in my hand. I've been shooting 1911 since I was 12 years old. And I find I can get right in there on that distal joint. And for me, that works better than the pad. The reason being, it gives a little bit more leverage. In the old days of the double action revolver shooters, when every shot, not just the first, was double action, the old time revolver masters called that part of the finger the power crease. It gave you much more leverage for a long, heavy, straight back pull. To see how that works, take your non-dominant hand like this. We're going to make a stiff trigger out of that. Come up, stiffen it up and resist. Come up with this finger and start at the at that pad, the whorl of the fingerprint. You'll find you can eventually pull that resisting finger back, but it takes some work. And it, when it does move, it kind of moves and fits and starts. Now I'll come into that distal joint right here and work that again. You'll find it's much easier. You've got a lot more leverage. Leverage equals power, power controls. It's a truth of geopolitics, and it's a truth of life, and it's a truth of pulling triggers. If you want to take a couple pounds off your trigger pull and not run into any liability situations, simply move your finger from here to here on the trigger and it'll happen for you. Back in uh, the revolver days when I shot a lot of PPC, my gun of choice for the most part was the Colt Python. And I found that picking up the gun, the Packmire grips felt better in my hands but shooting over the course repeatedly, I found I grouped a little bit better with the Hoag. So that was a classic example of feel and fit are not necessarily the same. In long guns, we see the same. Most uh, fixed stock sporting guns, uh, rifles and shotguns, will come with more length of pull than they need. Now, this may feel just right here when I pick it up in the gun shop wearing, uh, you know, pants and shirt. But then you get out in the field on a winter day with your hunting gun and you're all padded up to here, you find yourself starting to come a little bit off balance. Generally, for most of us, a shorter length of pull, rifle or shotgun, is going to work better. You'll find for the smaller person to adapt to the bigger stock is much harder than the larger person adapting to the shorter stock. With a telescopic sight, you just make sure that you have the eye relief appropriate. Okay, you'll find sometimes the dimensions stay the same, but little differences in shape and surface uh, make the performance difference for you. This is the Wilson Combat Module on the uh, SIG P365. You're going to have the same trigger reach as when it comes out of the box, but what I have with this, the subtly different shape and the stippling. I feel this is filling the hollow of my palm better and it's giving me more contact to stabilize with the gun. Uh, as the hand closes in here, it feels much more natural and it's almost like the gun was kind of squeezing back. It makes it much more stable and the stippling reduces any shifting in the hand upon recoil, which of course is going to interfere with the, your recovery time and your accuracy. We found on the 1911 pistols, the early guns, the original 1911s, the uh, World War I vintage, had the long trigger. But the average adult male soldier of the period was only about five feet six with proportional fingers. After World War I, the survey of the troops, what could be better with our small arms, 
Several people said the trigger reach was too long. And if you saw the 1911A1 of the 1920s, it had a much shorter trigger and the frame was scalloped out the way you see it today on the modern iterations. Today, we have the average adult male stands taller than 100 years ago. Fingers are proportionally longer. And that's why you see so many custom 1911s going back to the original long trigger. So a whole lot of, uh, of gun fit is really about the hand and the body interacting. It may not feel great when you're in the gun shop. You really got to get some trigger time behind it. See how is the gun grouping, balance the, the shot group with the time. That's where you're going to find out what really works for you. It's, it's like when you try on a suit at the tailor's, it looks fine when you're just standing up here in front of the mirror. After you've been out and moving with it, you find out whether or not it's really going to adapt to your lifestyle. The guns are that way too, and keep your mind open. Bill Jordan, one of my mentors, uh, the famous Border Patrol shooter, said that the, uh, the Border Patrol campaign hat would never quite fit your head, but eventually your head would come to fit the hat. I found that to be true of some guns. Uh, for a few years, my department issue service pistol was the Ruger P90. It fit my hand like a brick with a trigger. Um, one reason Bill Ruger got along so well with Mikhail Kalashnikov was they had similar design approaches in terms of robustness. And if Kalashnikov had ever designed a 45 auto pistol, it probably would have been the P90. It was an accurate gun, it was a reliable gun, but I literally had to make my hand fit it. And when we went later to another pistol that was a little bit more ergonomic, uh, my, my P90 went back into the safe for good. I could adapt to it, I want to stay shoot with it once, but it's better to have something that fits and works. If it fits well and feels well, that's the ideal. Hope that didn't sound too arcane, but you old gunnies out there know what I'm talking about. Another good example is uh, two guns of the time that were very contemporary, kind of a, a Coke versus Pepsi thing. The Sig Sauer P226 versus the Beretta 92. And there's a long history of the battle there for which would become the American service pistol. As you know, the Beretta actually won for me, I always found them pretty much equal in terms of reliability and in terms of accuracy and action smoothness and all of that. The SIG felt better in my hand, but I'd find shooting the same course of fire, I would simply get a very slightly better score with the Beretta. And for that reason, feel versus performance, I found myself gravitating toward the Beretta, even though both are excellent pistols. You may find uh, something similar in your travels with the gun. We'll see you down the road on, with other Wilson Combat Delivery and be watching our many content providers. There's a treasure trove of information out there. We'll see you later.